y'all, I'm fired up. I already had the, I already had the preacher towel out wiping my brow this morning. I'm fired up in Easter. It's going to be a good service. Again, thank you for being here. Uh, if you were not in the room earlier and we didn't get a chance to meet, my name is Kevin. And along with my wife, Megan, she's over here somewhere. She's over here somewhere. You'll meet her in a minute. We're the pastors here at Trove Heights. So glad that you are here. Uh, today, we just, we just want you to have an experience where you meet God. And I believe you're gonna do that today. I'm gonna give you a word that'll fire you up. It'll get you encouraged. But I believe transformation can happen through the word of God. And then after the service, we're gonna go enjoy everything that we have available. Our team's been working hard. We've got an amazing Easter egg hunt for all the kids. Uh, matter of fact, we were doing the math and we thought each kid might get about 40 eggs. Y'all, they're gonna get loaded up. So parents, y'all better be ready. Hopefully y'all brought an extra basket this morning, okay? And listen, parents, it's only for the kids, just so y'all know, okay? Don't be going out there trying to get a Twix out of a, an egg, okay? It's gonna be a good experience. We've got donuts in the lobby. We got bounce houses for the kids. We got a DJ photo wall. We're gonna have a blast. But let's give God the next few minutes together and let's jump into what he has for us, okay? Uh, I'm so excited you're here. Before we jump into the rest of our experience, why don't you take about 60 seconds or so, get out of your area, meet somebody, say hello, tell somebody you're glad to see them. Their hair looks pretty. Let's get, let's get to know somebody, let's go.
Give him one more praise this morning. Come on, we can't praise him enough on Easter Sunday. He got up out of the grave, everybody. Eternal life, resurrection power. My God, thank you, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank you, my friend. Man, y'all can be seated. Wow, 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 wow. Give it up for the team one more time. So proud of what they did today. We still got people making their way in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, I'm so excited, y'all. Easter Sunday, what a day. Aren't y'all glad the weather's nice today? Yesterday, I was like, Lord, where you at? Come on. I took the car wash to the, to the, car, I took the, car, to the car wash twice last night, like in faith. Jesus, tomorrow's gonna be amazing. It's a nice day today. Man, I, I don't know what you came in here expecting today on Easter Sunday, uh, but we wanted our, to do our best to give you an experience that, again, is powerful. Our aim here at Shrove Heights is to do four things. We have a vision that we want to see happen in your life as you get planted in the house of the Lord. Scripture says as you get planted in the house of the Lord, those who are planted will flourish. And we have a lot of people who are Christians and love God and are going to heaven, but they're not planted anywhere. And you can't flourish and live the rich and satisfying life God has for you if you're not planted somewhere. So here, before we jump into the message, I just want to invite you that if you love what you experienced today, make, make this an opportunity to get planted in the house of the Lord. And if this is not the place for you, that's okay too. We can recommend a bunch of great churches in our city to you that we're partnered with. The, the goal is that we want to see you get planted and flourish. And I want you to know that on the front end today. Our, my goal is not that you would join this church. We hope you like it and want to do that. But my goal is that you get planted and allow God to work in your life in a way that you never could have imagined. Because he'll do it to you if you let him. And that's what we're going to talk about today in the message. It's Easter Sunday. Uh, we've got a great time planned. Our goal is we want to help you as a church dream big, search deep, find more, and live rich is the way we like to say it. And that's found in John chapter 10, verse 10. Our goal is to help you dream big through this Sunday service and experience so that you walk out and you go, man, that was powerful. God is bigger. He's good. So we prep the room and make an atmosphere full of prayer. We pray over every seat, every door, every person greeting outside, all the way to the platform. We want to make sure that you're not getting a show today because we're not putting on a show, everybody. We are giving God glory is what we're doing. We want you to give God glory. And that's our hope. We want you to leave and dream big. And then we, we dream big, search deep in what we call small groups that happen between the Sundays. Because I don't know about y'all, I grew up in a church where it was like, see y'all next Sunday. But my life is, is, is discipleship and searching deep as I get plugged in with other believers and godly people between the Sundays. So we have small groups that meet all throughout the week that are available to you if you'd like to find out more about that. And then we find more through what's called the growth track. And as a matter of fact, go ahead and make a note. Next Sunday, we're gonna do what we call a fast track growth track right after the service next week. The first two Sundays of each month, it's two steps, step one, step two. If you wanna know what the church is all about, how we handle money, how we're governed, what do we believe, all that is found in Growth Track. You can ask any question. We're open books. We'll tell you about how we planted the church and what all God has done since. 
And then step two, you can join the team. If you're like, man, I love what's happening here. I want to be a part. I want to invest and play a part. You can do that through the growth track. So next Sunday after the service, there will be one fast track opportunity. You can knock them both out in one Sunday. So I invite you to that. And then we live rich by serving and just giving God all that we have so that he can use it to build his kingdom and get glory. And we want to help you be able to go through that process. And so if you came in here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, I'm just going to give you a disclaimer on the front end. I'm going to give you an opportunity and an invite at the end of the service. Okay. Our goal is that you walk out of here and your eternity is secure. Okay. But beyond that, we want to, we want to invite you to jump in at a deeper level. I grew up in a church where it was like, you get saved and it's like, go get them. You've arrived one day. You're going to die and you're going to go sit on a cloud and play a harp in heaven. And I just want you to know that is not what a life with Jesus is, everybody. A life with Jesus is full of love and joy and peace and kindness and godly relationships. And then eternal life is going to be better than you and me could ever imagine. And so we want to help you experience all that. That's our vision here as a church. And so I just want to encourage you today to lean in. If you receive the connect card on the way in, go ahead and pull that out. You should have received the pin. Go ahead and pull that out. Put it in your laps. I want to invite you to take notes. I want to encourage you to do that. And then at the end of the service, I'm going to direct you on, on what we're going to do with that card because we have some gifts for some of you. we got a lot of cool stuff that's going to happen after the service. So keep that handy. I believe if you take notes, you're more likely to go to heaven, just so you know. It's not in the Bible, but... I'm telling you, it'd help you, okay? Take some notes today. I believe uh, it's gonna be a good day. Um, I know it's Easter Sunday, but I'm apparently going to a gender reveal. I didn't know that until I walked out of the house this morning. <laughs> Got my pink and my baby blue. But it's Easter, y'all. And uh, y'all like my pocket square? Uh, it, it, was, it was jumping out, because I was jumping down here, but my mom helped me do that. My mom and dad are on the front row. I love my mom and dad. They're here <laughs> from Houston, Texas. And normally I don't wear a suit, but I did today just for y'all. Okay, it's Easter. I broke out, broke out my suit today. Uh, we, if you're wondering what kind of church we are, man, you probably figured out by now we're a hand-raising church. We're a hand-raising church. We're a talk-back church. We're a shout-the-preacher-down church. We're a get-involved kind of a church. And so I want to invite you. Come on, where's the church folks at today? Where's the church folks? Come on. Hey, I love that right there. I guess I'm real excited. People in the back. Why aren't y'all in the front row? Up here on the front row. We're going to have a good day in church today. Listen, we don't want anything from you other than to just open up your heart to receive the word, what God has for you today. Today, my prayer is not that you hear me, but that you hear the word of God. And not, that, not just that you receive it in your head and have knowledge, but that it goes into the soil of your heart. That's where transformation happens. And today I'm going to give you a message. You know, there's, there's, only, there's only so many things you can do to preach an Easter message. And I think uh, one of the, the pitfalls of preachers are, we're like, I got to preach something nobody's ever preached. And then I go, wait a second, 2,000 years worth of Sundays, nothing new I can come up with. I don't need to because the gospel in itself is all the power you and me need out of the word of God. And so today I, I'm so excited about what we're going to dig into. If you're taking notes, the title of my message is an empty grave and a full life, an empty grave and a full life. What is Jesus all about in the first place? Maybe you walked in here today and you're, you're asking yourself that what is Jesus all about? Who is this Jesus? Uh, the Bible says in Luke 19, 10, that the son of man came to seek and save the lost. And so I don't know kind of what your church background is. Maybe you grew up a, a certain denomination. We're, we're a non-denominational church. Um, and so we're, we're, just, we're just Christians. We just love Jesus, okay? Uh, some people would say that uh, non-denomination, well, how does that even work? You don't belong to a body. We're a part of what's called the Association of Related Churches. Uh, we have now over the last 21 years helped be a part of and plant over 1,100 churches across America and the world. Praise be to God for that. That's amazing. We were actually ARC Church Plant number 964, on August 21st, 2021, it's exciting what God has done since. We have seen 88 people say yes to Jesus in one of our services. Come on, give God praise for that. It's been amazing to watch what God's done. But even beyond that point, again, that's the first down and the first step. We've seen so many of you guys get plugged in, have life change happen, and then start to serve and get involved in small groups. And then we hear the stories of what God is doing in your life. And the best thing that I, I can have fulfillment through as a pastor and church leader is when I see one of you move from just, you said yes to Jesus one day to now getting in the game. So many of you, I could point out that I've watched just take the steps and I'm watching God do something great in your life. But in order for that to happen, you have to know what he's all about. And he's all about seeking and saving the lost and rescuing us from our sin. That's what we unpacked last week on Palm Sunday. Um, I, I thought growing up that, that God was just up in heaven waiting to strike me down. I've heard, I've heard people say, well, I decided to show up. It took me a long time because I just knew if I walked through those doors, God's going to strike me with lightning. 
And I just, want you, I just want you to know today, God is not mad at you. He's so happy you're in the room. He's so excited that you're here today and in church. Because in the house of the Lord, everybody, there's joy everlasting. There is mercies that are new every morning. His, his power is unfailing. It's never ending. And in the house of the Lord, you find all of that. And so I hope that you receive that today. After seeking and saving the lost and all the saving, God has more for you. And there's a focus he has. It's found in John chapter 10, verse 10. And this is really the theme verse of our vision as a church. The New King James Version says it this way. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then this is Jesus talking. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Isn't that a good word, abundantly? Come on, we talked about it a few weeks ago. When I go to Chick-fil-A, I can have one Chick-fil-A sauce, but two is better. Come on, somebody. Come on, I want an abundant life with Jesus. And I think a lot of us, have lived a life for Jesus and we know that eternity is secure. But what if I told you there's more for today? If I told you there was more for today and I gave you keys to understand how to get it, would you move on it? Because that's what I'm gonna try my best to give you today is some keys that'll help you with this. How do I receive this abundant life and then eternal life beyond? There was a teacher who had a fifth grade class and uh, she was asking her kids, uh, Christian school, asking her kids all these questions about how do I get to heaven? She said, if I sold my house and my car and I had a big garage sale and I gave all my money to the church, would I get into heaven? And all the kids yelled, no, all of them emphatically, no. Well, if I cleaned the church every day, I mowed the yard and I kept everything neat and tidy, would I then get into heaven? And all the children screamed, no, that is not how you get to heaven. She continued, well, then how can I get into heaven? And in the back of the room, a five-year-old boy said, lady, you got to die to go to heaven. (laughs) None of that's going to get you there. Now, I think as funny as that is, I think that's some of our thought process is one day it'll just be better. One day when I die, it'll just be better. But I want you to know that on the way to heaven, There's a rich and satisfying, abundant life that God has for you here and now, everybody. When we say stuff like the best is yet to come, that might be cliche for some people, but if you are following Jesus, I'm telling you the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. There's power for a rich and satisfying, abundant life for you. So what I want to unpack is how does he do it? How does he give us a rich and satisfying, abundant life. I'm gonna give you a couple things. Romans 8, chapter 11 puts it very well here. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Trove Heights, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He's not out there somewhere. He lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. He he will take you and get you up out of the grave, as we sang earlier. He'll do that for you if you let him. I think, I, think, uh, I think about this joke I heard one time about these two men and they're leaving a bar. They're leaving a bar and they're trying to figure out how do I get home? How do I get home? And this guy's like, he realized he needs to take a detour. So he starts, he starts walking and he's like, the only way to get home the fastest way possible is I got to walk through this graveyard. And it's nighttime, it's pitch black. So he's like, let's go. And he goes walking through the graveyard. And out of nowhere, he just drops in the ground and he had fallen into an open grave and he's trying to claw his way out. He can't see it's so black. It's pitch black. Can't hardly see his hand in front of his face. He's trying to claw his way out. And after about 10 minutes, he realizes there is no way I'm going to get out of this thing. So I'm just going to sit here in the corner of this grave and I'll just wait till in the morning. I'll yell. Somebody will find me. So he sits down in the grave. About 10 minutes later, he hears, he hears footsteps and it's another man coming, walking through to do the same thing. You got to cut through this graveyard. He goes, he goes walking through to cut through the graveyard. He's just walking right along and he falls into the same grave on the other end of the grave. He falls, he, he's freaking out. He can't see, can't see anything. It's pitch black and he's freaking out. He's trying to claw his way out. And after about 10 minutes, he stops and he thinks, man, I, I'm not going to get out of here. So I'll just wait. I'll yell. And in the morning, somebody will find me. And just then he felt a tug on his pants leg and a voice from the other end of the grave say, you are not getting out of here. But he did, everybody. That's the same. That's Jesus. I'm telling you, the, all the demons in hell and the devil himself thought you are not getting out of here. But he got up, everybody. He was resurrected to life and he's got the keys to death, hell, and the grave with him. And that should fire somebody up right there. I'm telling you, God has done a mighty, mighty work by getting up out of that grave. And I want you to know how big he is. Romans chapter four, verse 17, there is a old school, Old Testament hero, hero of the faith as we would call him, Abraham. How many of y'all know Abraham? Abraham 
Got, got one for you right here. What is everybody's favorite meat in the Old Testament? It's Abraham. All right, there you go. Y'all write that one down. You can take that to the, to the dinner table today, all right? Abraham had a son named Isaac. And before he ever had this son named Isaac that God blessed him with, this man was a hundred years old before he would even have that son. Now, parents who already, come on, where's grandparents at? Grandparents in the room? Grandparents in the room? You might be in your 50s, 60s, 70s. I don't know how old you are. Could you imagine your wife coming home, fellas, and going, got some news. Could you imagine this? Abraham's a hundred. And God's telling him they wanted a child. They have no child. God's been telling him forever. No, you're going to have a son. Matter of fact, you're going you're gonna to be the father of many nations. Your, your descendants are going to be as numerous as the sand on the seashore, God tells him. And then in Romans 4, 17, it says, that's what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. Check this part out right here. I want you to zero in on this as we get into the meat of the word today. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and creates new things out of nothing. We serve the God who brings the dead back to life, everybody. He's a big God. Come on, he's a big God, everybody. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. He is. He's big. He's great. He's good. And he's here to seek and save us from our sin and then give us a rich and satisfying life. So I want you to write this down if you're taking notes, and then we'll dig into our text for today. The resurrection of Jesus is offering power for you today to move from the life you are living to the life that you could be living. That's really what I, I want to convey to you here through the next 30 minutes or so that we have together is that there is more. There, there's more. And I think in American culture and church in 2023, we've gotten into this place where we just kind of like, well, this is the hand that I was dealt. I'll just, I'll just do my best to survive and make it through. But I'm telling you, we, we've talked about this a lot before. We serve a big God, faith-filled. I want to be faith-filled. I want to pray big, bold prayers. I want to believe that he's a, the God that brings the dead back to life. But there's times we begin to pray and we pray simple prayers like, when I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wait, who wrote that prayer, man? That's not a faith-filled prayer. We need, we need to be praying faith-filled prayers because he's a big God and there is more for you in your life beyond this point. I just want you to hear that today. God has more for you. And I think if we started operating in faith, now you begin to pray different ways as you're operating in faith, as you get planted in the house of the Lord and you, you begin digesting the word of God, you begin to do that, you get connected with other godly people and believers, you'll begin to grow in your faith. But all the while in your head, you're gonna try to begin to think logically and make sense of God and where, whether or not he will and won't answer this prayer prayer. But I want to tell you today that in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible will you find pray realistic prayers. You're not going to find that in the Bible anywhere. Matter of fact, he's going to say, hey, if you had faith the size of a teeny little mustard seed, you could say from the mountain, move from here to there and it'll move. We serve a big God, everybody. Y'all believe that? We serve a big God. We serve a big God. And the resurrection is really as good as, as I can possibly find in the Bible to show how big God is. There's really nothing bigger in our Christian faith journey than the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So our text today is gonna to be Matthew chapter 28, if you have your Bibles. We're gonna break this story down of the day that Jesus was resurrected. And then we're gonna walk through how can we experience that same resurrection power in our own lives, and then we're gonna celebrate. It's gonna be a great day. Who's ready for church today? Come on, y'all ready? Make some noise, we're ready. Matthew chapter 28, we're gonna look at the first 10 verses here today. It says, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Time out, man. Come on. He doesn't just roll the stone away. He sits on that thing. Come on, somebody. That's powerful right there. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Verse five, but the angel answered and said to the woman, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Listen, some of y'all, God's told you some stuff and you ain't seen it yet, but he's been doing hidden work. You just better get ready because it will be as he said. Okay, somebody needs to hear that today. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren 
to go to Galilee and there they will see me. I, I, honestly, it's the only logical response from a God who sent his son to earth to down a cross for you. By the way, that was not his cross. That was your cross. That was my cross. And he voluntarily said, I'll take your place. Romans 5, 8. If you, want a, if you want a scripture passage that you can memorize, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 is my favorite scripture verse in the Bible. It says, while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. What that tells me is he didn't wait for you to say, do, or do you, do you want to receive this? Are you going to follow me? Are you going to follow the rules? He didn't do any of that. He said, I see them at their lowest, at their mess. They don't care about me. I'm still going to die for them because I love them that much. And you need to know that today about your God. You serve the God who came to seek and save the lost and then was resurrected to give eternal life. Now, what I want to unpack for the next couple of minutes is this question. Why did Jesus need to rise from the dead in the first place? Maybe you've ever, why, why did he need to die? And why did he need to even rise from the dead? And he's God, why? Because we've gotten a lot of these kind of conversations and questions the last couple of weeks. It's like, why? If, if this was all like, why would God make bad people good? We, we've experienced tragedy in our city the last couple of weeks. And I don't have the answer as to why. But what I do know is that I'm gonna trust God no matter what, because 2 Corinthians 5 verse seven says, we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't have to see to know. I just got to know to see. That's the word for you today. If you know who he is, some of us know something. Come on, how many of you know something about your Savior, your Lord? He's changed you. Then you know something, you're going to see something. Why did, he need, why did he need to rise from the dead in the first place? Two reasons. Number one, to prove who he really was. Acts chapter one, verse three, it says that he began to appearing to people. Now, I always thought it was funny. The disciples are, the disciples are, you know, chilling in a, in a house somewhere. They're mourning our, our teacher, our master that we've been following, our, our closest friend. Everything that we do, it's been because we followed this man and he's gone and they're mourning and grieving and locked themselves in this room. And Jesus pops through a while. He's like, but how? peace be still, you know, and the, whoa, whoa. I think that's funny. Like Jesus scares the mess out of him. He's like, peace, come on. <laughs> y'all, the Bible has humor. Why do drugs when you can do scripture? I'm just saying, y'all need to read more of the Bible. I'm just saying, there's so much good gold in the Bible. That's it. This is how I read the Bible, y'all. And yes, I'm the real pastor. I promise you, this is how I read the Bible, okay? There's so much good stuff in here. And he appeared to over 400 people that are eyewitness accounts historically. Not just some fairy tale story. This is not a fairy tale story. There are over 400 eyewitness accounts of this man who died and then begin to walk around and meet people. Now, I don't know what else to tell you other than, well, that's like a cartoon story. Well, there's 400 people that say otherwise. And when you have been around somebody who knows that they've seen the power of God at work, don't you know that person? Look, I'll use my parents as an example up here. I grew up in church. My parents, uh, like we grew up, come on, how many of y'all grew up in church? Like Sunday school days. Come on, green felt board with the little Bible figures you put. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, this is church, church. If you had to endure all of that, thank you for still being around, okay? Thank you for being here. We grew up in church and I watched my parents pray like they believed he's the God who brings the dead back to life. So today, as a 38-year-old man with two young boys, one's about to be a teenager, they're growing, they're getting bigger, I think back to the example that I saw set for me, and I know I have to set the example. So in my house and in this church, my relationship with God has to be more important than anything that I can do for God. And I watched that example set for me through my parents. Matter of fact, even before we came out here on the stage tonight, we walked in the side room over here and I told my parents, I said, I need y'all to come back here and pray for me. How many of y'all got praying parents, grandparents? Come on, you got to pray. Y'all know those old church mothers when they be getting to pray, you're like, Lord, I just felt something. I don't even know what that was. I drank a bang and we got prayed for. Let's go. I'm telling you, it's a big, it's an awesome Sunday. And I'm telling you, I watched that example set because they see, they've seen some stuff. And when you, when you get around someone who has seen the power of God at work, it just oozes out of them. You can't help it. And that's really my story. I, I grew up in church. I was, I was following Jesus till I was 18 years old, but I knew all about God without really knowing God. And when you just know all about God, you can tell me some facts. But when you really have an intimate relationship with God and you know him, you can lay a hand on my shoulder and pray for him. And I'll say, swoo. Because you can feel it when somebody has an intimate relationship with God. You had all these eyewitness accounts, and I'm telling you, he just had to do it to prove who he really was. He's the only, by the way, he is, we serve the only God who said, I'm going to die, and I'll be raised back to life, and he did it. He's the only God who's living. All the other ones are dead. We serve the God of eternal life. He had to prove who he really was. And the second reason was he had to conquer death for himself and for me and you. He had to conquer death for all of us. Otherwise we would be headed on a one-way street to death and hell. 
but God. I mean, we, we, have, we, we had a first Thursday service on Thursday night. And we talked a lot about this, the awe and magnificence and wonder of our salvation. Today, I'm praying that some of you recapture that, the grace and mercy of a good God who gave us what we did not deserve and did what we could not have done for ourselves. He had to do it for me and you. Revelation 1.18, it says, this is him speaking. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And guess what? Oh, uh, just a little side note. I have the keys to the devil's house. Y'all know he's so defeated. He ain't even got the keys to his own house. God went and took his keys from him. Come on. We serve the God of more, everybody. That's amazing to me. I love it. But, but here's our problem. And really what I want you to walk away understanding today. Maybe this is your you know, 30th Easter on this planet. I don't know how many Easter's you've been a part of in a church setting, in a church service. But I think a lot of us understand the death of Jesus, but we don't really grasp the resurrection of Jesus. And they're two very different things that handle different things in our lives on earth and eternity. And so I wanna help you understand this resurrection piece. We come and we celebrate Easter, but I think a lot of us look more to the cross than the resurrection. And while they are both equal as powerful and necessary, what would happen if we move from understanding the death of Jesus to also the fact that he was resurrected and that same power is available to you today? So that's what I want you to really lean into for these next few minutes is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you and it's available today. That should get somebody fired up right there. It's available today. Thank you for that arousing amen on the front row down here. I appreciate that. Philippians 3, chapter 10, uh, verse 10, it says, I want to know Christ, Paul writing, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, belong, becoming like him in his death. I want you to know his power. And his power happens through anything in life. It says in Romans, it says, and we know, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and love him. All things are good things, right? But it's also bad things. It's also unfortunate things. And why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know, but we know that in all things, he works for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. All things. What if we had the mentality that everything is ordered by God? There's a story of an African king and he's got his servant with him and they're getting ready to go out hunting. And this servant over time had decided that he was gonna make sure that everything that happened in life, good things, bad things, sad things, it didn't matter what he faced, that his, he, he came up with a phrase for himself. Everything that happened, he'd go, this is a good thing. He just, this is a good thing. You, you, he stubs his toe on the, on the door, which makes you say a lot of the opposite things. Doesn't he? He's, he does that. He's like, this is a good thing. He just made this practice in his life. And he goes out with his African king one day and he asked him to load his gun for him. They're going hunting. He loads the gun for the king and the king blows his thumb off, literally just blow. And he turns around and he hits the servant. He's like, you wicked servant. What are you thinking? And he's like, this is a good thing. He's like, no, this is not a good thing. He's like, throw him in prison immediately. So he throws the man into prison and the man's in prison. And about a year later, the king is out doing the same thing. And he's captured by a group of cannibals. And so they tie him up, they put him on the stake and they are going to literally kill him in the moment, knife raised, ready to kill him and eat this king. And they notice that he's missing his thumb. And all of a sudden they back up, they start freaking out. They're like, let him go, let him go. They let him go and they let him run off. Turns out they were superstitious about, they will not kill and eat anything that's not whole. And so all he could think about was, oh my gosh, I've, I've, I've done such a horrible thing to my servant. I gotta go back to prison. I gotta get him out. I gotta apologize. And he shows up to the prison and he walks up to the man and he's, he falls at his feet. I'm so sorry that I put you here and that I've made you suffer and that I put you through this. I'm sorry. I'm, you, what you were doing, it was all ordained by God. And he goes, this is a good thing. And he's like, this is not a good thing. You've been in prison for a year. I've destroyed your life. This is not, a, this is a good thing. How is this a good thing? And he said, cause King, if I would have been with you, they would have eaten me. What if we had the mentality of this is a good thing and we know that God works in all things for the good that are called according to his purpose and love him in all things. And in order for that to happen, you have to let the resurrection power into your life. Again, the God that raised Jesus from the dead, his power lives in you. I think a lot of us have been walking around without the understanding that he's already, oh, he's already, oh, he's already in here. What would you do now? He's in, he's in me. He lives in me. He lives in you. And Jesus actually told the disciples after he was raised to life and then he calls them to the great commission and to go preach the gospel. He said, you will do greater things than I did. 
It's all on the other end of, do we believe that? This is a good thing. Everything that God does, God is good. God is great. He's sovereign. And when you follow that plan and you allow the resurrection power to lead your life, you'll begin to experience things in a whole different way. We have a lot of Christians who are defeated Christians. Man, God did not call you to live like, woe is me. I'm going to get there one. I'm just hanging on. I'm going to read my Bible today. I'm just hanging on, hanging on. I've heard pastors say stuff like, I remember where I was when he called me. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. It's like, no, no, we get to do this. I get to do this. Jesus saved my life and rescued me and transformed me. And now he uses me to help reach other people and point them to him. What a gift. What a privilege. We have to understand the resurrection power. And maybe you're thinking my life is too messed up. You don't know what I did last night, last week. I, I have too many years that I have to start doing good to catch up with all the bad. God is inviting you today to come as you are. He loves you just as you are from right where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you there. Our God is in the business of cleaning up people from the messiest places, everybody. He does his best work in the messiest places. So I just want to invite you to step into that today and allow the resurrection power to work in your life. A few things to understand about Easter. I'm gonna give you four things and then we'll enjoy the rest of our time together. Number one, the resurrection Easter is not an event or a holiday. It's a person. It's a person. So I grew up in church where Easter and Christmas was kind of the same. That one day a year we're going to talk about. And then, come on, don't lie, Christians. Listen, how many times you're reading in your devotional and you get to, you get to the Easter story and it's July. You're like, skip past that. They didn't know it's not April right here. <laughs> Confession, I've done that before, okay? I'm a pastor. We've all done that, okay? I want you to know that this is something we have to go back to every day, a life of remembrance. It's what we talked about in our first Thursday service the other day, a life of remembrance. Here's the amazing part about this. Jesus is Easter. Jesus is Easter. Jesus said he is the resurrection. He didn't say, he didn't say I will be, I'm gonna unpack it for you here in just a moment. He was crucified one time and he is risen. So he didn't say, when they rolled up in in Matthew 27, the angel didn't say he, he has risen. He has risen. He rose, he arose. He didn't use any of that kind of language. He said, he is. We serve the God who is everybody. He is ris risen. He is Easter. He is the resurrection. He's not here. They said, he's not here. You're looking for the living among the dead. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? We have way too many of us that are looking for a dead Jesus. And he's alive and he's got power available to you that can work on the inside of you if you let him. He is not here. He is risen. And that's the same in our lives. We're, we're walking in like maybe today I'll read this scripture verse and I'll have a good thought with my morning cup of coffee. I hope you enjoy all that, but there is power available to you because he is not in the dead places. He's trying to take you to living places. He's trying to take you to living places. I love how it says that. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is Easter. And I'm going to show it to you in another story before Jesus ever made it to the cross. John chapter 11 is a story of a man named Lazarus. And Mary and Martha had a brother named Lazarus, two, two sisters and a brother. And Jesus loved these people with his whole heart. He loved them. If you, hey, a little trivia for you. The shortest verse in the Bible can be found in this story. And it's simply Jesus wept. I just gave y'all some trivia right there. Okay, you can take that to somebody. Jesus wept. That scripture passage comes from this story about Lazarus. We're gonna look at John 11, verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, Lazarus has died. And they sent word to Jesus and Jesus is with his disciples and Jesus tells them, cool, we'll be there in a couple of days. And they're like, no, Jesus. No, no, you have to come right now. He's gonna die. Jesus is like, we'll be there in a couple of days. Have you ever wondered why does Jesus not move on your timing? That's a question I've asked myself a lot because if you hadn't been here, my brother would not have died. But I know now that even God will give you whatever you ask. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus said to her, hold up, time out. Yo, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Today, I want to ask you, church, do you believe this? 
He, he didn't say, I'm going to be resurrected. He said, I am the resurrection. And he said it before he ever died in the first place. I've never zeroed in on this. I, I message prep with my dad every week. And so a lot of times when you come in and you heard a message, I got it from him. That's what happened. Okay. I, not really, not really. I always have a thought and I have him and another man in Arkansas, Guy Moffley, one of my cl closest friends. I love you, Guy. And I hit these two men who are, you know, they, they have more life experience than me. They know the Bible front and back. And I'll be like, y'all, I just had a thought. And sometimes they might be like, bro, that's not even in the Bible. I'll be like, got it. Understand. Not even in the Bible. Got it. Okay. Got it. I'll be like, this is why I talk to y'all right here. Okay. Cause I'll get so fired up and then they'll start preaching to me. I'll be like, if you don't stop it right now, whoa, I'll be waving a towel letter. Y'all better stop it right now. I get all fired up, but they helped me message prep. And I hit him up with this and I'm like, I start telling him about what I'm talking about. He goes, don't you remember? He is the resurrection. I said, Oh shoot. What chapter and verse is that in right now? That's right. I forgot. We're just preaching back and forth to each other. He said this before he ever even needed to be resurrected because he doesn't have to be resurrected when he is the resurrection. He is the resurrection. He is the resurrection. It goes on to say beyond that in verse 37, John 11, but some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone load across the entrance. That sound familiar to anybody? Take away the stone, he said, but Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor for he has been there for four days days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you? Come on. Jesus is telling some of us today. Did I not tell you that if you believed in me for the benefit of the people, I love this. You'll see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Come on today. Some of y'all, God's going to look in the middle of this service and he's going to look the enemy in the face and say, take the grave clothes off of him today and let him go in Jesus name. I love this thought that he didn't say, he didn't point to the tomb and go, come out. He said, Lazarus, come out. Jennifer, come out. Come on, John, come out. Gene, come on out. Because if he would have just said, come out, then every dead body in the vicinity would have come on out of the grave. So he had to call out specifically to the one who he was there for. There, there's a difference. Here's what happens. And this is why you need people around you who have, the, who have a relationship with Jesus because it'll benefit you. The dead areas of your life, you get someone else around you interceding for you, going to the feet of Jesus for you. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, Scripture says. And you get some people around you who are prayer warriors. Oh man, it'll stir something up in you and things you didn't even know were dead will begin to come to life because it's an abundant life. It's an abundant life for you. It's an abundant life. So he is Easter, everybody. The second thing you gotta know is that Jesus did not come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. And there's a lot of us that are, you know, in spiritual ruin and decay, so to speak. And you know, you ever pass a, a broken down building, all, you see them all through the Nashville in different places where it's like, they just never did anything with it. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just sat there for years with nothing happening. There's stuff all overgrown. Windows are busted out, boards, there's nothing happening. Your, your spiritual life, you're in ruins. It's, it's been ruined. You're, I'm too far gone. There's nothing that God could do for me. I came today because maybe I'd feel better about myself today and this week. And I just want you to know he's in the business of bringing those types of things and people back to life. That's the, all God does is know how to make dead things come back to life. That's all he knows how to do. Ephesians 1:19, Paul writes, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to do what? To help those who believe him who believe him. It's the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heaven. I want to help you here today. Understand how great and awesome this power is. That's available to you. It's available for you in your marriage. If you came in here today and you're like, man, we're hanging on by a thread. God does not want you to hang on by a thread. He wants you to come together and live a rich and satisfying abundant life. According to scripture. He can do this in your finances. It does not matter what decisions you made yesterday. It matters what you allow God to do in your life today. That's the difference maker. He can do it in your morals. 
You don't know, I've got a dirty mouth. I got to watch my mouth. Well, let the Holy Spirit come in. He'll clean that up. He'll make you go on a new path. He'll, he'll set your, he can do all of this. Maybe you have a physical ailment in your body, but by his stripes, you are healed. Not you might be, not you could be, you are healed. He went to the cross so that we could be made whole and then he was resurrected after the fact. So again, John 10, 10, the theme scripture verse of our church and our vision, I'm gonna give it to you out of the NLT, which is our favorite passage out of this. The thief's purpose, the enemy, and we all have an enemy. Two lives you could live. There's only two. There's no in between. There's not a third option. Two lives you could live. The thief's life for you is to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus' life for you is to give you a rich and satisfying life. And that's straight out of the Bible. And so this is, this is such a good thing that you have to understand today, okay? Life itself is you start alive and you end dead. That's life. You're born. And then you die one day. It starts with life, it ends in death. But a life with Jesus starts with death and ends in life. C.S. Lewis said, Easter is death working backwards. What a thought. Easter is death working backwards. So I cannot help you get saved and live a rich and satisfying life with Jesus unless first you understand I was dead in my sin. I was dead in trespasses, but God. You start with death and then you go, oh, I'm in need of a savior. I need to be resurrected. I need that power in my life. And then God goes to work and you won't only live life abundantly here. You're going to live in eternity forever with Jesus. And I'm just telling y'all, it's going to be a thousand times better than you could ever imagine. Now, look, I don't know. It does not tell us in scripture. We know there's going to be streets of gold. We know there's going to be a lot of precious jewels and the tree of life and a river of life. We know certain things. We're going to get a mansion. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all are like, I ain't never even stepped foot in a mansion. Well, you're going to get to own one, okay? You're going to get one of those. Now, I just believe if we're going to get all these things, and, a, and heaven is a thousand times better than we could imagine, I just am telling y'all, I will have a chocolate fountain in my front yard, and whatever I dip into it and put in my mouth, will abs will start popping out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's true, but I think your thought process and understanding of what could God do, your expectation will determine your experience in this life and beyond. I want to help you be able to understand that today. So how do we do it again? You got to be born again is what scripture says. Not, not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and keep trying to do it a better version of you. It's be born again. How do we do that? First Peter 1, 3. It says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Come on. How many of y'all were beautiful babies? Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, I was a beautiful baby. Tell them, I, I was a beautiful, I know, I know things have changed, but I was a beautiful baby, okay? You gotta be born again in order to have this resurrection life. So you start at death and then you move to life. And you gotta be able to understand that today. God sees greatness in you that you can't see in yourself. My story is one of this. And uh, I grew, again, I grew up in church. And then after I graduated high school, I had 10 years where I was far away from God in church as I could be and drugs and alcohol and chasing money and girls and just living the life that I thought there's got to be more. And what happens is you think there's more and there is, but you'll go trying to fulfill what only God can do in you through things that the world can give you. And then you'll find out that it satisfies for a moment. And it's always empty after the fact because each one of us have a God-sized hole in us that only God can fill. And the rich and satisfying life comes through pursuing Jesus. And then after 10 years, I had a battle with cancer and I think the team has some pictures up here, but I went through cancer in 2012. This is me laying in a bed. I've been going through chemotherapy for 16 weeks. I'm as far away from God as I could be, but this was the moment that I realized something has to change. I can't keep living the way I'm living. I, I've done too many drugs. I've drank too much alcohol. I'm too far gone. Maybe that's how you feel today. But I started going through this process and we started going back to church and then eventually about 11 months later, I went into remission and I had my last surgery and I'm rolling out of the hospital and I'm getting ready to go home. Okay, cancer free, praise God, he healed me. Yes, sir, thank you, Jesus. But I still didn't go all in with Jesus. So I went right back to the old way, trying to do it better. But God doesn't make things better. He makes them brand new. And as I began to go to church again and again and again, God started knocking on my heart and eventually God saved me and I began to go up onto platforms like this and lead people to Jesus and declare freedom. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. There's abundant life. Only God can do that. If you knew me, you would go, it could only be God. We serve the God of more, everybody. And I'm telling you, he doesn't just wanna save you from your mess. He wants to take you on a journey that will transform you and your family and the people around you if you let him. 
There is greater for you. He sees greatness in you. You can't see in yourself. And the next thing you got to know is that Easter is not just something to celebrate. It's something to experience. There's a few ways you can do this through our church. Well, again, we have outside of this Sunday service, we have what's called small groups. These are people who meet in homes and restaurants. Some of them meet virtually on Zoom all throughout the week, men's groups, women's groups, game night groups, food groups. We, have all, we just have groups available because life will change when you don't do it alone. Don't do life alone. Get plugged in with some people if you're like, I don't have anybody good in my life. I believe that this is a great place for you to start. You can go to troveheights.com slash small groups. You can join a group today. And if you're a little hesitant about it, I don't wanna just show up in somebody's living room. I don't know them, they don't know me. You can email them, you can call them, you can put a face with the name first and ask some questions, okay? You get plugged into a small group. Then we have what's called the dream team. Then where's my dream team in the room? Come on, dream team, make some noise. We got the dream team in the room. They're serving all over the place, helping put this thing together. The dream team is really living out the rich life God has for you. I just, I'm giving my life away to God. Whatever he wants to do with it, I let him use it. And that is the win of our church. The win of our church is not to see you saved or join this church. The win of our church is to see you begin to live out the rich and satisfying life that God has for you. And I love it. So I'm going to give you today what's called, you should write this down. I'm going to give you the three month challenge today. The three month challenge. I want to ask you if you decide that you want to make this place home or you've been coming for any amount of time and you've just been popping in here and there. I want to challenge you to take the three month challenge for the next 12 weeks. Make, make it a mission to be in church every, every Sunday. I'm going to be in church every Sunday. Show up to church and join a group and then begin to just show up early before the service starts and stay late. Begin, just go all in for three months. And if after three months, you're like, I, it's not really working for me, man, we will help connect you somewhere else or help point you in the right direction. But I'm a firm believer, if you give God all of you for three months, you'll never look back. Because once you taste and see that the Lord, he is good, you're gonna want it again and again and again. I'm just telling you, you will, you will. Three month challenge because God loves you right where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you there. And as the band makes their way back up, I had one of the members on our team write a story that I wanted to share with you to kind of help put a bow on this message today, because I want you to know that God does not just want to save you. He's got more for you. And it can start today. This guy on our team named Corey, and I had him write this so I could read it to you coming from him. He says, I first came to Trove Heights in January of 2022. Due to some church hurt that I had experienced at previous churches, I had been out of church for a while. I hadn't been using my gift of music or been spending time in the Word or in prayer since I had moved to Nashville, which was in October of 2020. Since that time, I had started chasing what was my greatest dream, to be a good husband and a good father, but on my own terms. I had grown up in a home full of alcoholism, strife, and abuse. So this idea of being the opposite of the stepfathers who raised me had been deep in my heart and soul for a long time. This idea of being a good husband and a good father is where I drew my self-worth from. I moved to Nashville for a relationship with a woman who would eventually become my fiance. We dated for about a year and then got engaged. And in August of 2022, over the following months, she relapsed into alcoholism and became physically and emotionally abusive towards me, so I left. As much as I wanted this dream of mine, I knew I didn't wanna have kids and raise them in a home like I grew up in. Right before I left, an old friend of mine from a previous church messaged me and told me he was moving to Nashville to be a worship director at a church called Shrove Heights. I told him that I would think about it, but I didn't really have any intention in going until I was sitting in a hotel room looking at everything I had built my life around fall apart. I didn't have a place to live. My dreams seemed further out of my reach than ever. And I had to admit that I didn't know what else to do. When I came to Trove, I was angry. I was angry at myself, angry at her. I was angry at God. I was also depressed to the point of struggling with suicidal thoughts. Pastor always says expectations determine your experience, but I didn't come with any expectations that day. Sometimes Jesus shows up to blow away your expectations. When I walked into the room, I saw a diverse group of people loving each other and worshiping God without any group being held above the other. I asked myself if this could be real because growing up in the South, you don't see a lot of other churches that have people of different skin tones and backgrounds coming together very often. The love that I felt in the room that day was, has never diminished. It didn't matter where I came from or what I had gone through to get here. The people in this room only wanted to do one thing, to show me the love of Christ that had set them free and support me as I restarted my journey. Through their love, Jesus showed me my worth is not in who I could be to someone else down the road, but in who I am in him and in this moment and every moment. Those other dreams may come in time, but it is he who says that I'm defined by him. For freedom, Christ has set us free. 
Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, Galatians 5.1. For me, that's freedom from depression, from anger, from an abusive past, the dreams and expectations that define me, and freedom to just be who made me to be in the moment, every moment, and day by day. That's my freedom, and I found it here with these people in this room, and you can too. You may not know it, but Corey is up here playing bass every week, and he's had his life transformed by the power of a God who raised Jesus from the dead. And he got plugged in and he began to experience more in a rich and satisfying life. And he can do it for you too. You just got to let him go to work in you. I, I, I love this dude, Corey. Bro, you're a blessing. I hit him this week and I said, bro, I got to tell your story. Can I? I said, I'd be honored. He said, absolutely. And he said, I don't know if that's good. I said, I'm going to read it word for word. He said, I don't know about that. I said, oh yeah, we're going to read it word for word. What a powerful story. What a powerful story of life change. I want you to know today that nothing is too dead for God to bring it back to life. He did things even greater than resurrecting his son Jesus after three days. I'm gonna show you. Go back to Lazarus, John chapter 11, verse 17. On Jesus' arrival, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for how many days? Four days. Jesus was raised to life after three days. Why did Jesus say, I'm gonna wait here for a couple more days before I come? Because he wants you and me to know that I can do even greater. There's no limit to his power. If it's been four days, five days, 10 days, it might have been five years, God can still resurrect your life. He can do it if you let him. And it goes even beyond four days. Matthew 27, as Jesus is hanging on that cross, it says in verse 50, Jesus shouted again and he released his spirit. This is my, y'all, y'all better get fired up with me right here. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn, was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went to the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. Some of these people might have been dead for days, weeks, months, years. But here's what happens. Here's what happens. When Jesus died on the cross and he said, it is finished. And he released his spirit. The spirit of God never died, everybody. The body of Jesus died. So his spirit had to go somewhere and he only brings dead things back to life. So he couldn't help himself. Jesus said, it is finished. His body, le- his spirit left his body and it just went popping up people out of ground. Just come on. He just couldn't help himself. And people started popping up everywhere. Started popping up everywhere because it can't help himself but bring dead things back to life. And then it says at the resurrection, they left the graveyard. We were talking about this. It's almost like they popped up out of the grave. They're like, oh, what's up, bro, what's up? And they just sat in the cemetery for three days, just partying. Ah, who are you going to go talk to? And then, oh, 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 he's getting up out of the grave. And then they were like, let's go see some people. Come on, come on, peace be still. And they're popping through walls and everything. God brings dead things back to life, everybody. And I don't care how long you feel like you've been dead in an area of your life, there is nothing too big for the power of the big God that we serve. He's got more for you. And that leads me to my last point as we close, which is this. The resurrection is victory. The resurrection is victory. 1 Corinthians 54, verse 57 It says, death has been swallowed in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. When he died on that cross and he was resurrected back to life, that was the death of death, everybody. Death is done for. He's already taken care of it. He's got the keys. And it'll resurrect your life if you let it today. I want you to understand how big of a God that we serve. And if I can just help you taste and see that he's good, you're, you're going to want to come back again and again and again because we serve a God who came to seek and save the lost, but then give you a resurrection-filled, abundant, powerful life. And I want you to understand that. Ephesians three seventeen. There's nothing else he won't do for you. There's nothing else he won't do for you. It says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses all your knowledge in your head, 
that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Can we give him the best praise we have today? Come on, if you've been resurrected back to life, give him a praise that he's worthy of today. We can never give him all that he's due. He's worthy. He's mighty. And he, he conquered death for us. So I'm gonna ask you right where you're at. You can be seated with me for just a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed, watching online, do the same with us. This is the most important moment potentially of your life. Look, listen, scripture says that tomorrow is not promised. I don't know what comes when we leave here. God forbid anything crazy happens, but I want to know and you wanna know that eternity is secure. And I wanna give you an opportunity to understand and grasp a hold of the rich and satisfying, powerful, resurrection-filled life that God has for you on this Easter Sunday. This is not a day to celebrate or an event. This is a moment where you can leave and go, my life was radically transformed. And so God, today I pray for every one of us in this room, whether in a seat, whether watching online, whether we're on this platform, God, I pray that you fill us full of power, full of grace, full of mercy, Jesus. I thank you for all that you've done for us. I thank you that you are the God who sent your son to die on a cross, but you didn't leave him there. He rose back to life so that we could live with that power in our lives, oh Jesus. Help some of us grasp it today, God. Right now, as I'm praying, I pray you begin to stir the soil of our hearts, God, for more. There is greater. You are the God of all creation. Today, we give you our attention. And maybe you're in this room today and um, you don't really know kind of where you're at in this eternity thing. I'm gonna walk us all through something before we pray and dismissing all the great stuff we have out there. We have a, we have a survey I, I wanna ask you to take and the team is gonna throw it up here on the screen. Before I pray with you, I wanna make sure your eternity is secure. If today you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make an opportunity and a decision to say yes to Jesus and go all in, I'm gonna invite you to do that right now. Maybe you came in this room and you've been far from God and you, haven't, you have not been following him and today you know, I, I gotta come home. I'm, I'm gonna rededicate my life to Jesus, recommit to go all in. We wanna ask you to do that. So if you will, pull out this connect card in your lap. Ushers are gonna come down front. If you, if you do not have a connect card, wave your hand at us real quick. They're coming down the aisles here. They'll make sure you get one if you don't. If you need a pen, they'll help you here. Grab your pen, grab your connect card. We're all gonna participate in this. And I'm just gonna ask you to be bold in your response before we pray for you and invite a bunch of new people into the kingdom of God today. You're gonna see this survey we have on the top here. All of us are one of these four letters and I want you to be bold and just be honest. Listen, A is I'm already in a real relationship with Jesus. If you are, man, put that proud. Yeah, I'm already in a relationship. If you know today that you need Jesus and you're going all in with him or you're gonna recommit your life and say, I, I'm, I'm coming home. I want you to put B today. I want you to put B. And if you need some more time, put C, that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna give you all the time you need. Keep coming, kicking around the tires. We'll give you all the time you need. And then if it's D and you don't ever intend to make that decision, you just came because somebody dragged you in here. That's okay too. Matter of fact, you're my favorite type of person because I, I just can't wait to see what God will do beyond this point. Whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you, I know he's gonna do it. If that's you, just be bold, put that. Everybody take about 60 seconds real quick. And right there above your name, you can fill out all that stuff on the front that says connect with us. Fill that out as much information as you'd like us to have as you're comfortable with. And then in a big letter on the top, just put your letter right there. I'll give you a minute to do that. A, B, C, or D. When you're done, you can just look up at me once you fill out your info and put your letter up there. Look up at me, it'll let me know you're done. Watching online, you can do the same thing. You can email me, if you'd rather do it that way, kevin at troveheights.com. You can text the word connect to the number you'll see on your screen here in just a moment and it'll send you the same thing. Connect card there. Once you've done that, and you've let us know of your decision, you'll also see some other boxes you can fill out down here. If it's your first time, please let us know that. We have a gift for you and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But I wanna pray for you right now. If you, if you are B right now, if you're B and you're ready to go all in, come on right now, I just want you to say a prayer with me, something like this. What matters is that you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that he's Savior and Lord, it says in Romans 10, 9, that you will be saved. You just believe he's raised Christ from the dead. So right here and right now, say a prayer with me like this. If you're going all in, you're recommitting your life, let's do it. Say, Jesus, 
Today, I give you my life. Today, I'm going all in with you. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, you are my savior. You are my Lord. I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, can we celebrate anybody that said that prayer today? Come on, let's celebrate that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So proud of you if you just said that prayer. Make sure to notate those. We're gonna let you drop those in the containers with our ushers on the way out so that we can reach out to you with the next steps. Again, even if you're a C or a D, man, we're cool with that. We just wanna be able to provide a space where you feel comfortable to come back in and know that this is the house of the Lord. Everybody's welcome. Come on in as you are. And we believe God will do the rest beyond that point. If it's your first time here, let us know that on the top of this card as well because we have a gift we wanna send you. Matter of fact, rather than send it to you, we're just gonna give it to you today. If it's your first time in the room, notate that on the card. Visit our merch table. Our merch team has a special gift for you today. If it's your first time, if it's your 10th time, don't put that on there now, okay? First time guests, okay? And we hope you'd like to move from being a guest to saying, man, I, I think I want to come back. That's our hope. Join us next week. we got a lot happening. And starting with that, on the back of this card, if you turn it over, one more little survey I'm going to ask you to fill out real quick. We're going to get us out of here. We're starting a series next week for the next four weeks called You Asked For It. So on the back of that card, when you tear off the perforated edge and drop it in with the ushers, there are eight topics on the back of that card you can pick from. I'm going to ask you real quick right here while we, we, got, we got it out. Pick your top two topics that you'd like to hear what the Word of God has to say. Pick those two real quick, just any two. No more than two now, pick two. And for the next four weeks, we're gonna preach on the four topics and unpack out of what the Bible has to say about the topics that you choose, you asked for. That'll start next Sunday. So while you're doing that, go ahead and fill those topics out for us. And on the way out, you can drop those in the containers. We'll get all your info. We're gonna follow up with you, reach out to you, celebrate you. And then we got four weeks that are gonna be power packed so that we can preach on what you wanna hear about and unpack God's word on it, okay? Man, I'm excited about what God's doing. Anybody have a good time in church today? I'm telling you, God's good. I pray you're encouraged. Watching online, thank you for being a part of the ride with us. Uh, we're gonna close right now by worshiping God with our giving, and then we'll go out and do everything we got out there available for us, stick around. If it's your first time here at Trove Heights, feel no pressure to give in this service. This service is our gift to you. Thank you for being in the room today. For all you guys that call Hope, uh, Trove Heights home and watching online and in the room, thank you for the way that you give. You're making a major impact, not only being able to have services here and provide all that's happening after, but our first Thursday experience in missions, we have so much that's happening. Matter of fact, if you'd like to be a part of buying merch, our merch is set up out there. All the proceeds go to missions and jump in and be a part of that. But thank you for the way you give. We believe giving is a worshipful act. So we're gonna do that here to close our service today. And then show back up next Sunday because next Sunday we kick off a new series and next Sunday's water baptism Sunday, everybody. I'm pretty fired up for that. It's gonna be awesome. If you'd like to be water baptized, there's a box on this connect card. You can check and let us know. We'll have everything ready for you. We'll connect with you tomorrow on next steps for that. So fill that out, let us know. And uh, stay close to social media. Follow us at Trove Heights. Go look for all that stuff. And we'll make sure you got all the info you need. Let's all stand now. We're gonna roll out into all that we have in the lobby outside. We're gonna kick off, if you, if you have kids, you're gonna be a part of the egg hunt. We're gonna kick that off in the field over to the side. You can exit the front doors or the doors you came in on the side. That egg hunt will start in about 15 minutes. So use the restroom, grab kids, do what you need to do. We're gonna watch and make sure everybody's out there and then we'll kick that off. DJ will be out there kind of giving uh, instructions on that. So who had a good time in church today? Anybody had a good time in church? Come on, let's lift our hands all across the room. God, we love you today. We thank you for what you've done in this service. We worship you and give you back what's already yours. Thank you for the way you bless us. Today, do mighty work beyond this point in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship. Come on. Until
Let's remember that as we go about our Sunday today. Let's reflect on that power that rose Jesus from the dead. That same power is where? It's in you and me. So let's go. Let's celebrate out here like He is alive. We'll see you next Sunday. Love you all.